good afternoon to you, our cherished listeners. It's always indeed super exciting to come your way every Wednesday with your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass is also brought to us by First Code Management Services, Industry, Get It Right, and also brought to us by Lancaster University. They boast of being one of the only British university campuses in West Africa. Thank you for joining us today on today's edition of Masterclass. It's the first day of September. New beginnings, new month, and new things, new ways of looking at our business and making inroads. My name, as always, is Yabanafo, and I will be your host for the show today. In the last three weeks, if you joined us here on Masterclass, we had a conversation here looking at the business value of cyber security. In that conversation, we're privileged to have some wonderful brains. I call them the best brains. Uh, forgive me if I say that. <laughs> but they're the best brains in uh, cyber security and info security because they were here on my show. Um, we had me, Jan Mensa, and me. Um, good afternoon to you. We also had Mr. C.K. Bruce, both of Inovari, and we were privileged to have Abel Richardson also of AFSA. Good afternoon to you, gentlemen, and thank you for um, being here on Masterclass and sharing some thoughts with us on the business value of cyber security. One thing I took away from that conversation essentially was that if we're going to win this fight in cyber security, one of the things that we should look out for is the human intervention, the human intervention, because obviously AI hasn't taken over yet, and so there's obviously that human connection that makes all of this technology work. And if there's going to be a point of failure, it's where the human intervention is, and therefore we need to look at that. Like all good things, that conversation had to come to an end, and it has. Hopefully we'll come back to it some point later in the year um, or going forward. But today we start a completely new um, conversation, if you like. And it's one of those things that sort of play in every conversation, in every corporate circle, in your business, in all the meetings you've attended, in all the trainings. There's this one key where that keeps coming out. Um, and it's the all-important topic of strategy. Strategy. Uh, we talk about strategy. What is strategy? What is strategy not? Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be privileged to have a conversation here on the show. And uh, we're going to be sharing some thoughts on what strategies. We choose to call this conversation strategy simplified. Strategy simplified. We will be joined in this conversation by a strategy consultant who is also a lecturer and a manager at the PwC Business School in the person of Dr. Mapa Kwanza. Doctor, you're welcome to the show. Thank you, Yao. I'm excited because when we started having this conversation yesterday and in preparing for the show, I was looking at all sorts of angles um, for the conversation. And, you know, strategy is one of those things that, like all other things that are catching on, like digitization, thanks to COVID and even before COVID, like all other ways of doing new things, new products, new innovations, people are beginning to plan more. People are beginning to project. So, you you, you know, you hear like in 2050, this is gonna, what's going to happen in the next 30 years. The things that are going to feature yeah. in development, you, food security, water, yeah. energy. E even with fossil fuel, you're hearing innovations about electrical Electric. cars. You're hearing yeah. people going to space. Richard Branson and his team yeah. just did that on a commercial flight. New things are happening, and so people are beginning to plan a bit more. Yeah. And so I asked myself, what's this interesting word, you know, um, called strategy? You are the expert in this conversation today, but I looked up Wikipedia, yeah. and Wikipedia essentially said it's a general plan to achieve one or more long-term or overall goals under conditions of uncertainty. Yeah. Under conditions of uncertainty. That's what Wikipedia said. So then I went online to find out what are some of the notable comments that people have made mm -hmm. on strategy. Okay. Various people have shared various thoughts on strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, and Michael Porter is one of those people, and um, he said that strategy is about making choices, trade-offs. It's about deliberately choosing to be different. Yeah. This is Michael Porter. Michael Porter is an yes, American he's academic. one of the fathers of strategy. Of strategy. Yes. Brilliant. And then he also said something. He says, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to, to do. do. Exactly. The essence of strategy is yes. choosing what not to do. One of my greatest strategists of all time mm -hmm. is a Chinese strategist. Okay. The one who wrote The Art of War. Yes. San Chu. Yes. I have a few of his quotes. I will share them later on in the show. Okay. But now let's let's listen to you. Today we're going to introduce the conversation, if you like, yeah. and make it relevant to our business owners and our small and medium-scale enterprises all the way through to our corporates and yeah. generally our general listenership. Some may have an understanding, some may have had exposure, some may not have had exposure. Sort of introduce that conversation to us and juxtapose it in the context of relevance, mm -hmm. if you like. 
to the business environment. All right. Share some thoughts with us. Okay, so thank you very much uh, once again and greetings to your li listeners. And um, I must say that it's an opportunity to share mm. um, a bit of what I know with majority of the people that I'm not sure mm. I can claim I know better than. <laughs> but at least there is some little yes. things that we can share and learn from each other. And I'm Indeed. happy that I'm in the driving seat this um, particular afternoon. Indeed. Indeed. So we call in this whole process strategy simplified because mm. it's a very complex mm. subject. And depending on where you sit and the context you find yourself mm. in, there are a lot of things that come to play. And because of its complexities and also how we even loosely use the term in our daily um, mm. conversations, mm -hmm. it's even misapplied and sometimes people even are afraid to tackle it. So the plan is to demystify it and make it simple and make it so relevant that even as individuals, we can see some kind of value in, in, in um, or at least we can now know that strategy can be our friend mm. and then appropriate it. So for this month, it's a whole conversation we are having. And for today, we're just looking at some basic issues and some other things that basically more introductory in nature. But next mm. week, we shall look at uh, the process of um, making a strategy or the strategic planning process. Mm. And then we shall go further to look at some strategic tools in the following week. Mm. And in the fourth week, look at strategic thinking, whereby... I will try to encourage our listeners to view things from a strategic point of view. In Critical a way, thinking, if you exactly, like. Exactly, from that perspective. And on the final day, we shall look at some Ghanaian case studies and try to interrogate them. And, so bring, and bring the conversation home. Exactly. So basically, that's Just before you continue, Doc, just remind our listeners also that we're streaming live on Facebook. And just for those who like to take notes also, we have some slides like we always do. So we'll be sharing those slides so that as doctor speaks, you can make notes if you want to. So just go to our Facebook page and watch the video. Then you can follow the slides as doctor okay. continues. Please All right. Thank you. So um, I'm not sure whether uh, at least those viewing on Facebook mm. are seeing the slides. They are but seeing I, the slides. I'm yeah. trying to tell a story. Mm. So from a very basic point of view, assuming that I were to talk to my daughter about strategy, mm. Um, let's say in the home there is, there is let's say um, some kind of ball mm. on a shelf. Mm -hmm. Yes, and she wants to take the ball from the shelf. She's standing here. This is her current position. The to be state is to pick the ball. So, so there she's is a at gap. a lower plane than the ball is. Exactly. And the objective on is a to shelf. get the ball to her level. Yes, or to, I mean, access it and use it to play. And use it to play, right. Yes, so now she's got options. One would be to stack chess and reach it. Mm. One would be to pick up a ladder and reach it. Mm -hmm. Another could be to even attempt to climb the shelf to get to the top. Mm -hmm. The Another point could is be to push the shelf down. To push the shelf down. <laughs> yes, I, I like that. So the thing is, the thing is, from where you are and what you are get going, there is a gap. That is a strategic gap. Mm. Whatever you do to be able to get to where you want to get to, for me, is what is strategy. Mm. It's just like a road map, a road map, like you said, or a way to win, a way to ensure that a certain target is met. So it's the how. Yes. Yes, so you can look at it from being the how. The point is, from a very corporate um, context, an organization would typically maybe see an opportunity, depending on the situation. So there could be an opportunity, and within the opportunity, of course, you have some resources, mm -hmm. right? You have some skills, and then, of course, you frame an objective around the opportunity that you have seen. So these things will be within the frame, as in your asset state and where you want to go, mm -hmm. where your current state and where you want to go. These dynamics could be there. So for instance, Joy FM um, might have spotted an opportunity. And as a result of that, the organization would make a decision by way of the objective that we want to do this for our listeners, right? And that in doing so, so let's talk about masterclass. Mm. The opportunity is that maybe there isn't any program on air in the country that appears to give some kind of knowledge, mm. especially to those who cannot afford consultants like us. Mm. Mm. So 
you decide to that becomes an opportunity within the fray you pick up an objective the objective is to get a program that can serve the needs of people who want to get some free training yes but in it is the fact that we can get sponsors okay. and other things and make some money okay. so they can project that if we do that we can make x can amount make, of can money get some mileage top of mind awareness exactly brand affinity exactly yeah. So those become your objective. So there's an opportunity, there's an objective. Then you ask yourself, which resources do I have? For Joy FM, we say there is a radio station there already. They have mm -hmm. um, people who are trained like to frequency, handle everything. Bandwidth. So those yeah. become your resources. Then you may ask skills. Yeah. I uh, Resources may also be seen in some cases as yeah. skill, but sometimes we want to also sp separate it. Those are specific abilities or capabilities that you need that can help you. Now, Within your current state and where you want to go to, how to fashion out this, the opportunity against your objective, your skills, and um, the resources. How to balance it in a way to have a strategic fit, right? Which means that then you can, it propels you to get to what you want to get to. All of that are the issues around strategy. So I just want people to understand that even if you are in, in your home, like COVID came, they said people are not supposed to go. People straight away thought of things. I'm not, I'm not going to go out. I don't know what to do. I have a thousand cities here. What can I do with it? Some people bought food and kept it home. That kind of decision is your strategy to survive, survive. within the environment. Yeah. So organizations are, and individuals are actually uh, making strategic decisions all the time, except that we need to clarify it and help people to perceive it so in a very simple way what i've tried to do is to establish the point that strategy is nothing but all that you do that can help you to achieve an end or move from a career to a state and get somewhere else so having said that we need to understand the strategy from normally in a traditional business school you would hear about three things but i want to make us four make it four we have the corporate level strategy, we have the business level strategy, and then we have the functional strategy. I will even want to add another one, which is the personal strategy. Now let's look at it. The corporate strategy in the perspective of Joy FM or multimedia group, the CEO and top level manager, managers have made a big decision, which is to invest in the media. So invest in the media space, probably with an objective to become number one or not more than number two within the air, air, airwave space. So this is a big strategic decision. It has got long-term impact on the firm. It has got impact on the resources of the firm. And the strategic leadership make all the provisions or the make sure that every support that the other actors in the firm would need to, as, uh, to achieve the end is, 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 is provided. And that's all they care about. Then we come to the business level. The business level strategies, are, or the managers at the business level, what they do is that they pick up the corporate strategy and appropriate them into business terms. In sometimes we call them SBUs, so they set up businesses to ensure that certain objectives can be met that can fulfill the corporate objective. So in the case of Joy FM... It's like breaking it down. I just want to sort of bring it home to my listeners. Yeah. Essentially, it's like breaking down the agenda at the top, yes. whatever you call it, objective, exactly. to the various areas. Because if you're in a, in a company and there is, let's say, we want to be the best company at the end of 2021, yeah. how do we do that? That departments, finance, operations, marketing. Yeah, before service. we get, I think you are going um, a bit ahead of me. Okay. So I, I, I was just yes. trying to summarize it, but please help me with that. Yeah. I want to draw the connection to mm -hmm. my listeners so that yes. if somebody has a business of five staff, ten staff, mm -hmm. they don't think this conversation is above my head. Yeah, so we'll get there. Right. So we'll get there and you, you appreciate right. that. Maybe we can give one or two scenarios mm -hmm. and can help us to um, clarify that. So the... For the purposes of multimedia, I'm just trying to explain mm. this concept using multimedia as a group. So within the, after the corporate strategy of the, in, the 
CEOs and the top managers deciding that we are investing in the media space. Mm -hmm. I get in it. Mm -hmm. Then we have Joy FM. Mm -hmm. Joy FM is a radio station for a corporate guy like you. Mm -hmm. Looking at the kind of presenters they have and the focus and everything, mm -hmm. they are targeting the middle upper class, okay. if I should say. Then we have the Asempa FM. Asempa FM, I describe it as a, like the 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 box to box man. Mm. Look at the, the the politics they do there. Mm. Look at the sports they do there. Mm. It is very masculine in nature. Mm. Unlike uh, maybe Hit FM. Mm -hmm. So these are different business units, and they are all working within the broad framework that has been provided from corporates, mm -hmm. as in investing in the media, but they are focusing different in market different segments. markets uh, in the business on its own. Mm. Now, when you come to Joy FM, you are likely to have a marketing manager, mm -hmm. some sales director, programs manager, mm -hmm. and all of that. And you may, that level mm -hmm. is what we call the functional strategy or functional managers. Right. So they are there. The marketing man manager for Joy FM is working out marketing stuff within Joy FM. The finance man is making sure that the financial issues are being catered for. The HR guy in Joy FM is doing that. And you may realize that if you go to Hit FM, they may have the same department there. Mm -hmm. So the functional leaders are there to make sure that they will do things right. They will do what must be done within their business units to achieve certain ends that will help the business to what level to achieve its goals, and then it goes all the way down. Now, let us look at Cal, Cal Bank, right? That's where you were. Yeah. Yes. So, Cal Bank has made a corporate decision to invest in the financial sector. Now, you may come down and realize that within Cal Bank, there are divisions, right? And those divisions are like the, maybe some other things like, um, let's say, retail banking, right? You have corporate banking, maybe you have some insurance and some advisory work, right? Those become business units, and they work in that order. And within all the business units, there are functional managers like the sales director, manager for um, a certain business unit who is working on sales and the HR people. Uh, so that's the way it works. So for a very simple person running one-man business, the decision to invest in, say, um, what what can what example what the decision to invest in any business, any business could yes. be your corporate decision. Mm. This is what I've decided to do. You must make resources available and all all that to make sure that you get it done. You may not be so big to see these layers so clearly, mm. but you'd have had a bigger picture to invest in a certain area, right? Then the other part is the fact that you need to make sure that there are functions that can support you. You know, at a certain level, trying to break down the business strategy and corporate strategy and may not be able to work. But one thing you can easily see is the fact that you may have to put together the, the functional activities to support you to meet up with what the kind of um, objective that you have yeah. set for yourself in that way. But essentially, just for today, trying to help people to understand strategy is the fact that there is an end, an objective that you have in mind. Mm. And the fact that to be able to achieve that objective, there are certain steps that you need to take. And to make things simple, I just said that within the context you find yourself, there are certain variables you have to play with. Mm. Which resources are available? Which skills are available? Mm -hmm. What is the opportunity? How clear is it? Uh, defining the opportunity very well and, and deciding on how to exploit the opportunity by making sure that you have the right skills if you have to train yourself or employ the right skills, putting these things together to, in a way that can help you to what, achieve the goal, which is to get to your to-be state, is basically what the whole strategy thing is about. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I mean as you speak, something comes to my mind very strongly, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, People own their own businesses. People yeah. have started, they've got some heirloom, they've got some load from the bank, they've set mm -hmm. up a business and all of that. At what point do you draw a connect or disconnect between mm -hmm. their personal strategy mm -hmm. 
and the business strategy. And I asked this question because earlier on in the conversation where we're looking at um, good corporate governance practices, you know, the caution was sounded that people should begin to understand that with, you know, the introduction of new corporate governance rules and all of that, people should begin to separate themselves from the company. So the company itself is one item and you are an item. And even though there's still, there's, 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 there's sole proprietorship and all of that, people should begin to treat the institution as an institution. At what point does a personal objective mm -hmm. become connected or disconnected from the business objective? And as we answer this, let's sort of give a few examples so that... Okay. All right. So that's good. And it's very good you brought in this because I, I said that traditionally you see the three layers, but I wanted to introduce the personal one. Yes. So as an individual, you may not have your own business. You may be employed and therefore working for somebody. Now, you need to make sure that you have your personal strategy. And one of the things you need to do is to make sure that it aligns with the corporate strategy so that you are not seen as a deviant. Because normally, when you are not fitting, fitting, then you are already trying to uh, show yourself the door, right? Now, having your own personal strategy means that within the organization you find yourself in, what and what can you do? to ensure that you, perf you help the organization to meet its stated goals, whilst you also achieve your own personal um, objectives, like growing in the firm, um, getting recognition, and therefore being rewarded for that, or using the experience you gather as the basis to um, get some higher opportunity elsewhere. You understand? So your personal strategy is, is important. And you must emanate from understanding the corporate strategy, how it has been reduced to the business strategy, and the very function you find yourself in. If you are able to plug yourself in a way that your actions fulfills the strategy of the, obje uh, of the uh, uh, firm and therefore achieving the objectives of the firm, you can easily be recognized. So you see people complaining, oh, they don't recognize me. Sometimes it's just because what you are pursuing, your interests are not aligning. And because they are not aligning, they are not helping the corporate body to achieve what they, I mean, they project to see. And in, on the basis of that, you may not be seen, you may not be rewarded, or you could even be shown the door. So that's yeah. just about it. But back to your question, how do I um, separate um, my the business strategy from my personal strategy? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so... That's why the, those corporate governance issues are up. As, as, as a matter of fact, especially when your business is growing, you need to get to the point that you have to understand that the business is also a whole entity on its own mm -hmm. and has got certain um, elements that will help the business to thrive. And that you should be humble enough to subject yourself to the, the, the rules of what you yourself have created. What I think is the issue is the fact that some people are not able to align themselves to systems. And the thing is that if you are leading a firm and you think because you are leading the firm, others should follow the system and you will not follow. You, you, you show an example, right, to people that the rules do not matter. And by virtue of that, you may just realize that um, things can get out of hand and all efforts will not be coherent to help the organization achieve its aim. So for me, what I would say is that it's important to ensure that personally you have aligned yourself to the goals and aspirations of the firm. And then most importantly, because of what the question you have asked, the system that you have put in place to help the organization achieve an end, you, are, you abide by it because systems are created by men. But if we are not willing to abide by it, it will not work. Mm. Do you get the point mm. I'm making? Mm. So for me, that's just what I want to say as far as that is concerned. And it's especially... So it has to be an alignment you, of objectives. And yes. Essentially, that's what I hear yes. you say. An alignment of objectives mm -hmm. all around the table. Yes. And it's important that you say that because I was looking at the individual at the business from different perspectives. Okay. The individual as an employee, the individual as a senior manager, mm -hmm. the individual as a business owner, yes. the individual as a board member, the individual as a shareholder. And just so we don't keep repeating ourselves, what we're saying is that regardless of the position you stand in the circle, mm -hmm. where the circle is 
everything else around the business and the business being in the center, yeah. there must be an alignment of your personal objectives yes. with the business objectives. Yes. But that also goes without saying that the business objectives must be clear. Exactly. And well communicated. Yes. So and well normally understood. what firms must do is that they must train their workers to understand the aspirations of the business. Mm. Right. And then also train their workers to understand the strategy that we are using to achieve our aspiration. Mm. Right. And then you as an individual must have the burden to align yourself to the strategy of the firm. If you do that, you will not be in trouble. You would you would end up achieving. And even where your results are not given, where your works are not producing the desired result, because you have fitted yourself mm. within the framework that has been established, you will still not be seen as not having worked. Mm. So I made the point earlier on that as an individual, you have to make sure that you have a strategy that will help you to grow within the system. But don't let it conflict. Be at variance. Yes, with the corporate goal and then if you are the firm owner you must also know that a system you have created or if you are an md of a firm don't think that you should be you should be working outside the system it's not a good sign it cannot do help. as i say not as i do no i have another question on temperament but i will come to that because i, I sort of want us to make it a bit more relevant to our environment and our context okay. so that our business owners can um learn from it if you like but i just want us to get interactive real quick so mm -hmm. we'll take a quick message from our sponsors when we come back we get interactive we'll take a message from our sponsors okay. now your favorite on-air business development program joy business masterclass is in session and you can interact with us on facebook via the joy 99.7 fm or joy business pages if you tweet the handle is at joy 997 fm or at joy business gh don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 0551-111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass right here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. And we're having a conversation on strategy with Dr. Kwanza. We'll be getting interactive shortly so that you can pick up the phone, give us a call and share your thoughts on this conversation. But if you own any motor vehicle of any kind, a girl has some interesting um, information for you. So girls hire grid fuels have been tried and tested and proven and accepted over the years as the most suitable engine oil for all vehicle types. Girls High Grade Fuel comes in Girl Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP, and they're sold in every Girl station and not just selected stations. So fill up today with Girls High Grade Fuels. Goyal, good energy, Goyal, Yenara, Yedia. Just also remind you that the show today is brought to us also by Lancaster University. They boast of being the only British university in West Africa and also by First Code Management Services Industry. Get it right. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302216541. That's 0302216541. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. You're a business owner or you work as a senior manager or as an employee in, in any company. What is your understanding of the strategy of your company? How do you understand that strategy? How is it working? What is the vision? What is the mission? Are they just things that you have on file that you show whenever anyone asks for it? Do you understand it? How does it feed into your strategy? How does it trickle down into your own personal KPS? Pick up that phone. Give us a call. 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 0551111997. That's 0551111997. If you're driving, by all means, please do park. Don't text while you drive because we want you to arrive alive. Numbers to call again, 0302216541. So, Doc, while we're... Okay, I have a, <laughs> I have one on social media. Right? This one is from Digor in Medina. Good afternoon, Digor. Thank you for listening into Masterclass. He says, my question is this. What is the turning point, okay, turn around point, where a plan can fail in implementation? <laughs> Digor is asking, at what point can a plan fail in its implementation okay that's the so, goal from Medina. yes um this is this is interesting you see the thing that the advice i would give or um, at least my response to what he's asking mm. is the fact that i would say that um when you have a plan right and by the way plan is not the same as strategy i mean but uh, maybe we can go there mm -hmm. but it's not the same but the point is that but assuming you, that for his question yes he means strategy yes so what i'm saying is that 
when you put in place a strategy or even a plan or you set a, a goal and you realize that you're, you are not achieving it, nothing prevents you from making changes to it. In fact, when we discuss the strategic planning process, right, one of the things I would say is about the fact that people criticize the process. And they say that uh, one of the criticism is the fact that it is so structured and directive, as in giving instructions that do this, do, or it dictates what you are supposed to do. Mm. But really, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. We recently saw that firms had to retune their strategy in response to COVID because COVID had changed our social behavior and people could no longer go and buy food the way they had to buy it. So people had to now improvise by doing deliveries and allowing people to order online and all that. People were even afraid of operating businesses online, had to go online because that was the way to keep you in business and to survive. So at every point in time, there is a need to review what you are doing. And if you think that the strategy, your how to achieve what you are looking for is not giving you the needed results, nothing prevents you from making changes. I like what you just said. So, I mean, essentially, Digo, the answer to your question is that there are timelines to every strategy and there are points, milestones at which point you should see certain things. If at some point you are not seeing a response, it's time to take a second look. Of course. I maybe. think I have a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Hello, your boss. Name yeah, good afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Talk to me, my brother. Your name, where yeah, you're calling Ajiman, from? This is Taman. Oh, Ajiman. I actually have your question. Do you want to ask it now that you're on? Um, I want to ask another one. <laughs> I don't have too much time, so ask both of them very quickly. Then we can try and answer them. Yeah, I mean, um, in, um, I'm trying to, I mean, uh, I mean, take on some strategies. I think there are some certain difficulties and major problems that you might encounter. What are some of them, and how do you work out with them? Right. And secondly, um, maybe you are a small company that you are not able to employ people who are having the basic knowledge of the work that you are doing. Mm. And as new innovations are coming up, especially um, technologies abound, do you go and hire somebody for a shorter period or you can impress somebody who can help your strategies to go on at a point in time. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, those <laughs> Very, are his questions. Yes, yeah, heavily loaded so. questions. So, okay. All right. So, um, let's, let's, the first one, okay, so the second one was talking about the fact that do you need to pick up, yeah. um, I mean, employ somebody to help you. You need to look at, in fact, your decision. The first decision, one was also on challenges. On I mean, challenges, yes. challenges Your decision, right, to even employ it's part of your strategies. If you remember, I said that normally you have skills, you have um, resources mm -hmm. around against your objective and then um, your opportunity that you might have spotted. Now, you do an assessment of yourself and realize that, ah, I do not have the skill. Mm. There are a few options that you have. One would be, can I learn the skill? How long will it take me to um, acquire the skill at the level that can help me to... Do, perform the way I want to perform. Well, if not, how can I get somebody who has got a skill to help me? And at what value, right, would the person bring to me and at what cost? These are questions that you need to ask yourself. So you need to find out whether you've got the resources to support it. And now, like he said that it's a small business and he sounds like a young man, I would challenge him that if, if he doesn't have the resources to pay, he should give himself a target to learn it because today the university that is for free for all of us is what the YouTube at least Google and these are it is a whole resource so learn and it whatever yourself. you want to know yeah. you can learn it learn it your yourself own. or there's free or there's pro bono support yes. even online for everything, everything. you want to do. the second yeah. question challenges yes of course um, you yourself can 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 pose a challenge to yourself mm. what I'm, I'm trying to say that is that when you do not have what it takes to have that's why we we'll discuss strategic thinking along the line mm. if you don't have that it means that you are short chained in a way there are certain things you cannot do right so you need to subject yourself to some training or some in some cases even mentorship and stuff like that can help support. you and then of course if you cannot pay what i say to my friends is that and you we need to know the people we know the friends around us 
it's it's a whole it's a pool of resources. Use your network. Yes, buy into your network, get support. People can give you one or two advice, mm-hmm. or can lend you some kind of support for free just to help you. So you need to tap into, st- I mean, things like this to help you. Of course, implementation um, is is a challenge because if you don't clearly understand what you are doing, you have issues. But mm-hmm. just to simplify things for him. When you spot an opportunity, do a quick, a good, thorough inter- uh, I mean, examination of it to be sure that what you are claiming to be an opportunity really is. What I see people do is that they see an opportunity and quickly they want to go and handle it without examining it thoroughly. Yeah, call it due and diligence. Exactly. And you, right. can, you can hit along the line. And that's so we're saying that there are many challenges, but because there are challenges, number one, make sure you understand what you're doing. <coughs> Sorry. If you don't understand what you're doing, get help. Like we always say, shout. There are people uh, like Dr. Kwansa who are prepared to help you or point you in the right direction. Never I've got... Go down alone. Never go down alone. Yeah. I've got Edmond Awaiti on social media. Edmond says, good afternoon, Masterclass. Good program. My question, what are the key characteristics of a good strategy? And what is the impact of this strategy on organizational culture? Oh, okay. sorry. He says, what impact... Is, has organizational culture have on strategic decision making? Hey, two powerful <laughs> questions. Let's take the first okay. one. Okay. What are the? I have got a, just a few more minutes, so very quickly, thirty seconds. Okay. What are the character? Yes. So let me let me simplify it. If your strategy will work, you must have the commitment to get it to work. Okay. So one of the um, of the good characteristics is that there must be commitment to the process. Yes. Okay, then the second one, he's looking at what impact does organizational culture have on decision making? Okay, so the thing is that actually your strategy should frame up the culture. Mm. The culture is the way the organization, I mean, the life, the way and life of the people in the organization. Mm. If it, if you want to especially do new things, you need to make sure that you do training and mm. get people to uh, begin to understand the new direction, the new changes that are coming that and of course this culture uh, should be things that can help support you to achieve what you are looking for so the point is that the organizational culture can affect your strategy mm-hmm. if it if the culture is is not conducive for the strategy to not work but you can use your strategy to change the culture Brilliant. it's just a process I, I like the point you made i mean at this point i'll play an lpm <laughs> joy <laughs> fm or something like that All it's right. just straight home Okay. I'm, not, I'm not even going to repeat it. I've got Nanadra um, on social media. Nanadra says, I'm listening to your program and I'm enjoying it. Thank you, Nanadra. My question is this. Between an employee and an employer, who needs to bear the cost of training? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let me t- say this to you, Nanadra. I would, I would not even want to tackle the employer side. You have a responsibility as an individual to, train to have the skills that will help you to be valuable to the market, such that people will be willing to pay you for the skills you have. So I would not sit down for, for my position. employer to pay for training for me. Mm-hmm. I would do that knowing that it will help me um, to be important, mm. or at least it will put me in a position for somebody to buy my skills. So what we are saying to Nanadra is that clearly the first responsibility is yours as an individual. Then obviously, if your if your institution wants to pay for it, that's a pro bono. But yeah. you owe it to yourself to develop. Yeah. And what is your career aspiration? Yourself. What do you want to do? Sometimes you may even find yourself in an organization that does not support your career aspiration. Mm-hmm. You may want to do this and that, and that requires special skills. And those skills are not skills that are embedded within the daily functions of your organization. Mm-hmm. You can go out of your way and learn it. I know people who are doing different jobs and are in the law school mm. because ultimately they want to become lawyers. So you owe it to yourself and make sure that you, your personal development must not be compromised. Okay, another quick question here. Um, I'm still waiting for the phone lines to ring. Numbers to call 0302216541. We have just enough time to take one or two more calls. 0302216541. You can also send us a comment on 0551111997. Is there anything like a bad strategy and that strategy evolve? Yes, it does. Strategy does evolve. Um, and le- I mean, just think of Joy FM and not just Joy FM, all the media houses in Ghana. They were never doing this Facebook live thing. Um, it, it, it came to meet them. And if they didn't feel in, 
um, they would have lost their market. So they have provided the Facebook Live social media is working for them. It doesn't mean that the traditional thing has to be left out, but the truth is that it looks like the whole traditional media business is no more working. People are sitting in their own homes and they have a lot of audiences following them. So they needed to retune and work. One of the skills every one of us need, every organization need in this time, is what we call agility, your ability to respond quickly to changes. Mm. Because things are changing too rapidly. As for me, I am a this. I was trained, I don't want to in the profession. I was <laughs> trained as a this. Mm -hmm. This is how we do it. That mindset has to change. No, that has to change. So, look, we have, we have case studies, global case studies like um, IBM and stuff, which did not um, stick to, I mean, even Nokia. Let me use Nokia as an mm. example. Nokia was doing phones, right? When smartphones came and Samsung and co started giving us mu personalized our music on the phone, Nokia was waiting. Before we knew, Nokia was gone. Nokia has come into the system, but they are struggling to catch up. But then Nokia was the phone that everybody preferred. Nokia so 3310. If, yeah, 3310, <laughs> 11, uh, 1100 and co yeah. were powerful phones. But they, because they did not evolve quickly, People have left Nokia and uh, left. So okay. customers are changing. Okay. And once you see that customers are changing, you also have to change, align your business to meet the expectations Let of your customers. Let me give you 10 seconds. From what you've seen in the business arena, okay. wh what should people, what niches should people be looking out for in the future? In the future. Where would you put your money in the future? Just one or two places. Yes, in the future. Let me. Just 10 seconds. Yes, you in the future, I'll put it. my money in something tech. Technology. Something techy, yeah. Technology. Yes. Energy is going to be here in the future? Yes. Whatever you see, tech is going to play a very bigger role. I mean, and um, you don't have to be a scientist mm. or you don't have to be an engineer to be there wherever you find yourself. Today, it's no longer just for the IT people. Now, yes. everybody. Yes. Okay. So let me just share a few, a few of the quotations from my favorite Chinese strategist, okay. San Chu. Um, he says, appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are weak yes so there is there is a wisdom in that the wisdom in appearing weak in fact it has got even a biblical uh, undertone to mm. it the bible talks about the king when he knew that he was weak mm. he made himself like a madman mm. so when the opponent met him said that about the david you talk about so huge mm. is the one who is behaving like this take mm. him out and that saved his life mm. so sometimes it's important to do that then again why do you want look people have impressions of you mm. right and you do not have to you do not have to change that impression especially to a low level if somebody thinks of you as as look yes yeah, so recently i had a plus talking mm. right and he said that when people started saying to him that or criticizing him mm. that because he i mean he was getting yeah. some contract and making yeah. good money yeah. that actually opened him up to big people because the big people thought that he was making good money when it wasn't in, in fact true and trusted him for businesses. Mm. So you would, it makes a, a lot of sense. That point makes a lot okay. of sense. Perception can become reality for the exactly. one person. Let me share one more and then we'll round up. Okay. I've, I've sort of run out of time. Sang Chu says, if you know the enemy and know yourself, mm -hmm. you need not fear the result of a exactly. hundred battles. Mm -hmm. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither your enemy nor yourself, you will you succumb know. in every battle. Yeah, so the point is that the whole issue of strategy mm. is in essential because you are not the only player on the market. Mm. What's our take out from today's conversation? If we forget everything, what should we remember? Yes, what I want to say is that strategy is nothing big, right? Mm. It is only that what you want to do mm -hmm. to achieve a certain end. Brilliant. Yes. What are we expecting next week? Next week, we'll look at a strategic uh, planning process. process. I'm not going to look at it from the way that um, we discuss it from the business school. Mm. But what I'll do is that I'll just try and then help people to look at certain things mm. if you want to formulate your strategy. Your strategy. And then the fact that we can have strategy in very microbes. Mm. When I say microbes, what I'm trying mm. to say is that how to Smaller design... Units your functional strategies mm. in a way that can help you. So a mm. few things to look out for. So I'll talk about non-traditional things like social media, mm. and I talked about techie issues. Mm. I'll bring all of these things in it for us to have a picture around. Brilliant, around brilliant. That. So much more to share here on the show. Do make sure that you join us for this conversation same time next week. This has been Masterclass here on your Superstar. <laughs>